Hello everyone, in this lecture I am going to paraphrase and explain the poem, If, by Rudyard Kipling line by line. But if you are new to my channel then please like and subscribe the channel. Let's start it. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can remain calm when everybody around you are losing their temper and blaming it all on you. The poet suggests that if you can remain calm and control your temper when everyone else is blaming you for their troubles, then you possess inner strength and resilience. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can trust yourself when everybody doubts you, but you also allow their doubts too, it means that it's about believing in yourself when others doubt you but you also respect their doubts and don't try to tell them to stop their doubt but rather you allow them to doubt you. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or, if someone lied about you, and you don't lie. This means that it emphasizes patience and integrity. If you can endure waiting without becoming impatient or resorting to dishonesty when others deceive you, you exhibit moral strength. Simply, it means if you are patient in matter of waiting or in matter of dealing with lies told about you by others. Or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. Or, if someone hates you, and you don't hate in return, and yet, you don't show off, or seem too smart, by these lines, it means that it's about not responding to hatred with hatred, and maintaining modesty, and not appearing overly virtuous. Simply, you can say, if people hate you and you don't hate others in return, but still you don't seem smart or show off. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. If you can think, and not make thoughts your aim, if you can dream and not be controlled by dreams, if you can think and not make your thoughts your aim. This suggests that it's important to have dreams and aspirations, but not to let them to control your life. Similarly, one should think critically, but not obsess over intellectual pursuits to the detriment of other aspects of life. If you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can meet with victory and failure and treat them similarly. It means that it's about maintaining equality in the face of both success and failure, recognizing that these are fleeting and should not alter your core principles. Basically, it means that if you are able to treat them in a similar way, like not becoming over-emotional or very sad. Actually, Sometimes some people become very emotional in matter of sadness or happiness. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, if you can accept the truth that you have spoken which dishonest people can twist and make a trap for others. It means that, sometimes the truths you've spoken may be manipulated by dishonest people to deceive others. Simply, you can say sometimes dishonest people change your words and deceive others. Or watch the things you gave your life to, broken, and stoop and build, em up with worn out tools. Or see the things you gave your life to, destroyed, and rebuild them with the same, old tools, this implies that even when your efforts seem to be in vain, or when your hard work is destroyed, you still have the determination to rebuild and persist. In other words, you can say, when you see those things which you have given your time for building it and others come and destroy it. But still, you have the courage to rebuild it with little means. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss. If you gather all of your life savings or achievements and risk it for a game of chance. It means that it's about being willing to take calculated risks with the rewards you've earned, rather than hoarding them in fear. Simply, 
It means that if you have the ability to take risk and put all your achieved things in a risk and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss and lose and start again at the beginning and never say a word about your loss. These lines refer to the ability to recover from losses without complaining or boasting about your setbacks. Simply, it means that when you take risk and then lose everything but then you have the ability to start getting the lost things again and never complain about it. Like, that you have lost your achieved things. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. If you can make your body and mind work for you even when they are weak and tired, by these lines. The poet tells us about enduring and persevering even when your physical and mental strength seem depleted. Simply, it means if you are able to force your body to take work from it when there is no energy left. And so hold on when there is nothing in you. Except the will which says to them, hold on. Persevere even when you feel empty, relying solely on your determination that tells you, keep going. This emphasizes the power of determination and will, holding on and pushing through when you feel you have nothing left. Simply, you can say when there is no energy in your body except determination which tells your body to keep going. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if you are among the majority and maintain your moral principles, or possess authority without losing your humility. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, suggests that you should be able to engage with and communicate effectively with large gatherings of people, such as crowds, without compromising your moral principles and values. It means, you can be a part of public life or social events without sacrificing your integrity. Or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, conveys the idea that even if you find yourself in the company of kings or influential figures, you should remain down to earth and connected to the everyday concerns and experiences of ordinary people. This means that you do not become arrogant or detached from the concerns of the common people despite your association with those in power. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if no one can hurt you, whether they are enemies or friends, and if all men rely on you but not much. The poet is saying that if neither your enemies nor your closest friends can hurt you, and if you are not too attached to any one person, then you have achieved a state of emotional balance. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, if you can utilize the cruel minute which has sixty seconds and in which a distance can run be covered. The poet is also saying that life or time is unforgiving. Time will not wait for you. So you need to make the most of every moment. You need to use even a single minute which has 60 seconds and it is such a time in which you can cover some distance. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. My son, then you own the world and everything in it. And more importantly, you will become a successful man. In these last line the poet says to his son that if you have all the qualities as he has mentioned, so this world will belong to his son and all those things which are existed on this earth. And, obviously, he will be a successful man on the face of the earth. Well, if you have enjoyed this lecture then please don't forget like and subscription to the channel. Thank you.